Hello! In a previous video, we recalibrated this HP 8116 function generator from 1994. But to my dismay, it's not a quartz based synthesizer, but an analog frequency oscillator with a pretty digital display. Even when perfectly calibrated, it does not have the precision I need. So in this episode, we are going to turn to a 15 year older, but far more precise instrument, the HP 3325A, which uses so-called fractional N frequency synthesis to achieve its remarkable accuracy. But the one I have was acquired for next to nothing at an auction, and quite predictably, it does not work. Hello, today we are going to worry about our HP 3325A synthesizer function generator, because I need a good synthesizer, uh, low frequency synthesizer to eke the last decimal out of the cesium clock uh, running happily out there. And no, previously I, I, I tried to calibrate the um, 8116, but uh, I was bamboozled. I thought it was a synthesizer, but no, it's an, it was an analog instrument. This one is a true synthesizer, which means you can actually you know, get it to work on a fair number of decimals. It does 20 megahertz on sine wave, it does square wave at up to 10 megahertz, and it also does triangle waves, but only to 10 kilohertz. And the first thing you notice is that it's hard of keyboarding. Some of this stuff works, some of this stuff doesn't work, so let's see if I can clear it. No, I can't. So that's a problem, so let's restart it. Now, if I try to have some signal at the output, how do I do that? Amplitude, okay, there we go. Two, no, three, that button works. Volts, millivolts, this one, come on. All right, three volts. So it looks like since the Soviet clock, I have a recurring theme of jittery signals here. It's giving me, it looks like it's sweeping. Unwittingly, it's fine for a while, then it goes all crazy. So it's not something simple. Let's first repair a keyboard because this is annoying. Oh, not bad. Pretty, pretty, as you'd expect from HP of that era. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, so those are the famous West Keys. It's a HP invention by a fellow called West. And those are good. They were later replaced by the dead flash buttons. So those are the modern dead flash buttons with very little travel. They're all wobbly. We'll know if they're alive or dead. It's a great instrument otherwise, but no, this is what the standard you get now. But those have um, two problems, the contact oxidized in this case, and sometimes the little bands lose their flexibility and they become very hard to press, which doesn't seem to be the case. So I think this one's going to be easily repaired. So I took one West key apart for you so you can see how it works. Um, the plunger here pushes on these little fingers uh, which will, will contact the PCB and this is just the buckling spring. They are just pressed in and the pins are molded so you can, you can remove them by uh, just uh, with, with a soldering iron. So here are, here are the landing pads and the little fingers don't make good contact with the landing pads so it's contaminated either here or here. So there is a one special version of the Oxet, uh, which is the Oxet Gold, which actually costs quite a bit, but that's what you're supposed to use on gold. So the idea is to hit behind the key so it goes into the contact. If you do it over the spring, it's not going to do anything.
So now I can play with the buttons. So this is 200 kilohertz. And you can see it's going to calm down above a megahertz and 3 megahertz and it looks half decent. At least 3 megahertz, you can tell if it is at least 3 megahertz. I think it's pretty close and I need to recalibrate it, of course. But yeah, 3 megahertz and 3.1. 3 3 yeah, 3.1, 3 3.2. 3.3. So this is a synthesizer. It starts with a 30 megahertz internal frequency and then synthesizes uh, stuff with PLL. So it's, uh, it's uh, precise to the nth decimal here. There's some PLL action that's going on, but it's only locked part of the time. This is going to be interesting to debug. We'll have to go in the bowels of the PLL loops. I was actually hoping that my PLL loops were wonky, so we'd learn fractional end synthesis while debugging it. You see, this instrument uses an incredibly clever frequency synthesis, where a classic PLL gets complexified with a divider and a multiplier to form the end loop, and then further complicated by a pulse remover to do fractional end, and then polished by a digitally driven analog correction. And I might do a full explanation of it in a bonus video. But it turns out the fault was elsewhere. I started the usual routine of adjusting the power supplies and they looked all fine at first. But then I decided to take a closer look at the ripple with the osmeloscope. And I was just starting with adjusting the power supplies and that's a plus 15 and you notice it looks like a cap is not doing its thing here. This is the minus 15, it has the same problem. So looking at the power supply schematics here, it looks like the 5 volt is out of this big cap and the 15 volt is out of these two in series and for, no, luckily they have test point for the unregulated voltage. That's the ground, so that's no good. So one of the caps or both of them are unhappy. Uh, okay, let's find out which one that is. Right. And one. I think I found a bad cap and I can't tell. So this one is actually okay. Thousand microfarad, 0.2 ohms as promised but this one you can already tell it has leaked i can see the leaking right there on the surface so i don't expect very much from it Ooh, 100 puff 2 ohms no good, no good. Okay, so this one is, needs to be replaced. Right, so I have replaced the cap and nothing. Hmm, make sure it's not the fuse. Nope, not this one. Not this one either. Hmm. Oh, silly, silly. The board has to be screwed on. Uh, there is some of the screws back there make connections to the ground. So if you don't put all the screws back, it doesn't work. Oh well. Okay, so let's um, test the 15 volt now. 15 volts unregulated. Oh, it's happy over there. It's holding. Oh, okay. So that looks normal. So that's the unregulated. Let's see the regulated side. The regulated side. Yay! That's minus 15. And let's try plus 15. Yeah, okay. And now uh, we'll see if we can adjust the power supplies as per the spec. Oh, I was far off. So this thing had been readjusted to compensate for the bad cap. Okay, minus 15, plus 15, 
n plus 5 close enough let's see if it did fix my problem amplitude 2 volts oh yeah that fixed it oh well that was easy excellent <laughs> that was just a power supply problem in the car well, okay so that's good because i i don't have to uh fiddle around with the uh, VC the vco was not locking it was locking for a while they was going all crazy it was just power supply yay then we can go frequency one megahertz and oh it's repaired that's okay so now i just have to calibrate the frequency they just tell you to put it at 20 megahertz and it's one it's on one of the bottom boards so if you haven't seen the bottom Ooh, here are the attenuators so the relays i can get bad but i don't think i have a problem with that one here. later on so and carl found the hidden pot is this one does that do something to the frequency zippo okay i'm not measuring because i'm not on that would do it all right Man, <laughs> you, know, you have to reset this to 20 megahertz. All right, all right. Oops. There you go. I hate it when test equipment freezes the old. Yeah, yeah, it didn't. It didn't well, the, it makes us look like doofuses. We forgot <laughs> to plug the device in. Editing. It's all in the editing work. All right, but that's yeah. It's not precise to that digit. It's it's a quart, so it's precise to ten minus nine short term, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, okay. Looks good to me. All right. Okay, so we have that done. Let's flip it over so I can read the thing. Flipping it affects that no, it's good. Okay, try again. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, point nine, zero, hertz. Aha! One point two three four five six seven nope. I'm still. Are you sure it's measuring? Yeah, it's measuring. So I'm. Well, it's instead of gi giving me 89, it gives me 92. So it's four. It's um, it's three three millihertz off at 12 megahertz. Pretty cool. And the the other thing is that it goes super low. I think I can do 0.1234 hertz. There you go. Yeah. Oh, point one, two, three, four hertz. And then you can make it sweep. Start a hundred hertz. Stop. We'll do hundred kilohertz. And here we go. Whee! So, so I couldn't resist. I had to hook it up to some uh, some speakers. Okay. <laughs> there you go, it wobbles in sinusoidal. So you just need to have a couple more so one can modulate the other one. Yeah, yeah this one's modulatable, yeah, yeah, yes. That's so that would be the. And then you can do triangle. Which is, a, that would be a good one for synthesizers, right? And then you can do a triangle with. An abrupt end, sawtooth. a sawtooth, or one with a abrupt beginning. Negative sawtooth. Okay. <laughs> and in the inverted. Yeah. And this is the A model. It doesn't have the internal uh, modulation, unfortunately. Right. Because the the B model has internal modulation, including arbitrary memory. Right, but this has external modulation, right? This one's external. Well, I've just seen another function here. Yeah, I just need to repair the next one. I have another yeah. one actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I'm, I'm happy I repaired this one. And it will uh, it will make the recap people happy because the only thing that was wrong with it is that cap. 
All right. Well, you, uh, you recappers, be happy. That's what this instrument needed. But just one cap.